it's a mass of humanity here at yeah. NAM 2018 here in Anaheim. We had a really good time this year. Oh, we sure did. We had a great crew, a great team. You know, it's just we've covered so much in so little time. We got to spell each other, and we just saw a ton of great stuff in a short amount of time. Yeah, lots of unique stuff, too, things that you might not normally see, and you'll, you'll get a chance to see all those videos. Uh, but we met some interesting people, saw some stuff that perhaps nobody would have thought about before or even knew about. So it was great to, uh, to meet some of these people and see products that perhaps were not familiar to the American market. Uh, some acoustic stuff, some uh, some studio monitors and interfaces, and things like that. So, a lot of interesting stuff. What was the big surprise of of what we've seen that stood out to you? Um, well, there, there was the thing we started off with today. The um, the, the spire, the spire, spire. You the you know, little multi-channel interface. Not that it would have a, a whole lot of uh, utility for voice actors, but. But we did get to see the mixer face finally and see the functionality on it. That was the big surprise for me because yeah. we've seen prototypes of it over the last few years and it looked totally different. So yeah. seeing it today, it had a different form factor, different control. It was totally different. Yeah. I mean, he completely went back to the drawing board, revamped it, and he's ramping it up for production now. So. Stuffed an awful lot into a thing smaller than a pack of cigarettes. Pretty, it, maybe uh, pretty remember impressive. What those look like. If he releases it for anything close to what he says he may charge for it, we can't say yet because it's not official. It's going to be a pretty darn good deal. Yeah. And also uh, the acoustic panels that we saw with Ron Knight. Yeah. I'd never heard of them before, but the stuff was very aesthetically pleasing, which yeah. a lot of our clients are really appreciative of. It was They're aesthetically pleasing and it had functions and design that were kind of unique to us and again at a price point that was surprising as well yeah and and yesterday we saw a lot of great stuff as well you know, we I finally got to be inside a studio bricks right after seeing video of it and hearing mm -hmm. lots of people talk about it and it is indeed as good as uh, they say it is absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. what about you what was your highlight well, that Universal Audio booth was pretty darn cool. You yeah. got to go into a Western scene, and it looks like you're inside a saloon. And you got to do a classic shootout of analog to versus digital processing. And Not see as what easy you as it seemed. How did you do? Universal Audio is pretty good at duplicating analog gear. Yeah. I got three out of the four, actually. Um, one of them I was a total, total guess. Yeah. The base on the LA2. Yeah, yeah, that was a hard one. Total guess. The others had subtle things, but yeah. how did you do? They said I got one out of four, but I know I got two out of four because the guy who was with me got two out of four, and, and we you both put down the score. same things. <laughs> so, I don't yeah, know. it was pretty fascinating. Yeah. Again, all of the stuff that we, we use in voiceover primarily is designed for creating music, which is what NAM is really all about. This is yeah. a, a musical in, instrument and, and, and electronic manufacturers that make this stuff. Uh, well, Smash Mouse, for example, when he first came up with the idea, we saw him here a year ago, the Smash Mouse founder, and his product was squarely for musicians. Obviously, it's what he was thinking. Right. But when we came to him, and I, I saw him last year and said, hey, this would be great for voice actors in a booth that want to control their software with their foot right. and be hands-free. He was like, oh, that's interesting. Well, here he is this year with a prototype, and he's saying he's getting all this interest from the voiceover community he didn't expect. Yeah. So it was great to see that thing coming along, and we'll see how it goes. We'll definitely get one of those to try out in, in a voiceover booth and see how utilitarian, how helpful it is. Yeah, really. I mean, because I'm always in my booth, and I'm far away from the computer. I usually have a mouse or something. But yeah, to have a Bluetooth mouse on the floor just, that you just can just go, operate, yeah. roll back, punch in, whatever it is, yeah. pretty sweet. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. Um, you know, And there were a couple of microphones that were sort of voiceover specific, like the the uh, the Bach uh, 195, Unite 195. Oh, yeah. Uh, beautiful microphone, uh, and a lot of stuff at really good price points, which yes. we know is important to you. Yeah, absolutely. So, I'd say all in all, this was a very successful venture heading out here to Anaheim for two days. It was totally worth the effort. A lot of driving, a lot of waiting in traffic, a lot of crowds, waiting for, you know, everything here is a wait, but I think it was worth it. I hope you guys found it to be worth it too. All right. Well, look for all the videos. We'll be having them posted online on Facebook and on our website and stuff. So thanks for joining us here at NAM 2018. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And we're from VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. BS.